Hey guys, Quip the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Almost a year ago, I made a video about how to set up a Windows PC from scratch to use as your control center for all your of your astrophotography equipment using, of course, software like Nina and PHD2. But also, I had found a way to make Windows start a Wi-Fi hotspot regardless of where you are because Windows has this nice habit of thinking that you do not need to be starting a Wi-Fi hotspot on startup if you don't have already an internet connection. Obviously, for us, when we're in the field, that's a big problem because our uh, little PC that's sitting on top of our scope or maybe on the tripod, like we're in the middle of nowhere, there's no network anywhere, and so it's not connected to any Wi-Fi network. And because of that, Windows refuses to start a hotspot, which leads to trouble. One workaround has been to use your phone to create a hotspot on your phone with the same name as your hotspot at home for your MIDI PC to connect to it and thus think it has an internet connection and thus think, create its own hotspot, like crazy stuff. Another solution has been to use like a portable Wi-Fi router that's like powered and connected via USB that works too. And then a third solution was what I had in my previous video, which is using third party software that was costing, I think, two or three dollars. And then it automatic automatically made it work. But this software is no longer available, I'm told. So we need to find something else. And fortunately, we have something. And I'm here to take you step by step on how to set up your Windows PC or your Windows mini PC. For me, it's going to be the Melee Quieter 4C. It's a new mini PC I just received from Melee. I'll do a quick review on that later on. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss it while you're doing, going there. Like, uh, leave a comment, etc., etc. Anyway. All credits go to basically two people. One is uh, whoever Schrodinger Hepcat on Reddit is. If you're watching this video, thank you so much. Let us know down in the comments. He managed to find the solution with his Melee Quieter 3. It also works with the Melee Quieter 2 I tested and the Melee Quieter 4 I also tested. By the way, the Quieter 4 is really powerful. It's so fast. I really love it. Anyway, uh, back to the topic. So we have this whole document there and I'm not doing exactly what he mentions. I'm simplifying a few steps, but it works and I've tested it multiple times turning off my home network and getting my wife really angry at me because she was doing something. I'm sorry, wife. <laughs> but you know, astrophotography and you guys are more important. I hope she doesn't watch this. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> with that out of the way, there's this. I mentioned the second person. The second person is Craig Harding, one of my uh, subscribers who actually contacted me over on Facebook and gave me a whole document about how to make this uh, hotspot work. Now, his method didn't completely work. It lacked one thing that the Reddit post had, but basically I mixed the two together to get what I consider to be the perfect method. It doesn't require auto login into your computer or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get started into the steps. So I am now on my mini PC, the Melee Quieter 4C. And I do not have this set up because I, I deleted all that I will do again in this video just to show you. And what we are like the starting point, the assumption is you have Windows 11 installed, ideally Windows 11 Pro, which is the case with the Melee Quieter series. And you've set it up so that you have a local user. For me, there's a local user called Quiv, which is what I'm going to be doing uh, using. OK, now that we have those prerequisites in place, one of the things that I will want to do is is go to the Windows icon here and search for mobile hotspot because we want to set up the initial parameters of the hotspot. And in particular, we want to make sure that you can indeed create a hotspot when you have internet connectiv connectivity available. So I will turn this on and I will make sure that power savings here are off. I want to make sure that this is off. Otherwise, the hotspot could be turned off by the PC, even though you don't want, to, want it to. Another thing we're going to quickly do is right click on the Windows icon, go to Device Manager, and then to Network Adapters. And in here, you want to search for your wireless network adapter. For me, this is this one. I want to go right click, Properties, Power Management, and uh, make sure that allow the computer to turn off this device to save power is unchecked. This is also important. 
For me, it is already un unchecked because I did it, but by default, it was checked for me. So make sure you uncheck this and click on OK to validate. Another thing that you can do is change the properties. I will not expand this because it shows my password, but you can change your hotspot name and your hotspot password in there. So that's pretty important. Another thing we'd like to do, just to be sure, is I'm going to click on Windows, type regedit, and this will open up the registry editor. It will ask me to validate, so I validate this. And now we want to go to HKEY local machine, system, current control set, services, and then we search for IC something. Just a sec, let me find it. There it is, IC SSVC, obviously. And then we go to settings. And there you may or may not have a setting called peerless timeout enabled. And we want to make sure that this setting exists and is off. On this particular PC, it actually does not exist. So I'm going to right click and say click new. And I want to add a new D word value. And I'm going to call it peerless timeout enabled and double click on it to make sure that indeed the value in either hex or decimal is zero. And this will make sure that even if there are no devices connected to the hotspot, the hotspot will not turn off. Now in Siri, that's what the setting we put earlier uh, with the power save thing would also trigger, but that, that's just another layer to be triple safe that we have this. Once you're done, we can truly get started. So. Uh, now we're in there, I'm going to right click on the start menu and we're going to search, uh, what are we going to search? Device manager. Here we are. So now we're opening device manager. And what I'm going to do is click on quieter 4 c or whatever the top level is for you. I'm going to click on action and add legacy hardware there. Then we have a wizard like that. So I can click on next and I will say install the hardware that I manually select from a list advanced because we are advanced astrophotographers. Uh, so going next. And in this list, we want to search for network adapters. There we are. I'm going to select that, click next. And now we are waiting for a list to appear. This might take for longer than it did for me, depending on you. And we want to select Microsoft. And in there, we're going to search for this thing, Microsoft KM test loop, loop back adapter. I'm going to click next and just click next again. And now it's going to install the hardware. Now that it is installed, we next want to go to the control panel or our config panel. I don't remember the name. So I'm just uh, going to press the Windows key, uh, search for control panel. There we are. This is what I'm going to launch. I'm going to go to network and internet, network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings here. What we want to do is find, we'll have a list of adapters that I have on the PC. And you can see we have our Wi-Fi, we have our physical Ethernet, except that for me, it's just not plugged in. And we have Ethernet 2. I'm going to click on this and, cl and tap on F2 on my keyboard. That lets me rename it. We're going to rename it to loop back. Enter. There we go. Uh, note that right click rename doesn't work. So F2 is what you want to use. So now we have this loopback adapter that is actually the key to making everything work. Now that we've done this, it is a good idea to restart the PC to make sure that everything is good. So I am going to do just that and see you once it's restarted. Okay, the PC has restarted, so we are ready. I'm going to open my file manager and then I am going to go to my home folder, which for me is C users, and then quiv. And for you, it will be whatever username, local username you are using on your Windows machine. Then in here, I'm just going to right click somewhere blank and say new uh, text document. And just I'm going to call it uh, hotspot starter, for instance. Okay, so that's my hotspot starter script. And then in that text file I just created, I will copy paste this text here, which I will have in the description. So control C, and then I open up the text file here and I do control V. There we are. We have copy pasted the text. And now I'm going to click control S to save or just like file save. And we are going to rename this file to change the extension extension from text to PS1. Now, if you don't see the extension, uh, you may want to go under view, uh, show 
and file name extensions. If you're on Windows 10, this will be slightly different, but basically you want to show the file name extensions. Now I can go in ahead and just rename to PS1, the extension. It will ask me to validate those changes. I am sure about it, so I'm going to say yes. And now we have our script ready. The next part is we want to make sure that this script, which actually is the one that starts the hotspot, regardless of whether there is a network available to the mini PC or not, so including like in the field without any home network, we are going to have a task, launch this at startup. So how do we do that? We're going to click on the Windows button, and I'm going to search for Task Scheduler. There it is. So Task Scheduler is here. And now that we're in the Task Scheduler, I'm going to click on Create Task. And here we're going to put uh, a task name. So I'm going to call that Hotspot Starter. And I want to say that it should run whether the user is logged on or not. I want to run with highest privileges, and I want to configure for Windows 10. OK, so that's how my task will run. Now, this Triggers tab is where we tell the computer when we want this task to run. So I'm going to click on New. And then here, I'm going to say that I want to run it at startup. There we, go. we are. The task is enabled, but we are going to delay the task for one minute. This is just to make sure that Windows is well initialized and we have all of the network services launched. Everything is good. And this is one minute. And I'm going to click on OK. Now we have the new trigger. And now that we're done with here, I want to tell the system or the task what action it needs to take when this trigger is reached. So I go to the Actions tab, I click on New, and I'm going to tell it that I want to start a program. And this program is called PowerShell. PowerShell is just like a script executing program that is part of Windows. It can execute fairly complex scripts. And so that's what we're doing. And then I want to add arguments there. What will I add as arguments? I will add this line of text here. I'll put that in the description as well, which is basically going to tell it like you don't need a user profile to run. Uh, you're going to bypass any execution policies. And this is the file that you want to run. And this part, the parameter file, will point to the hotspot starter ps one file that we just created together. So note that for you, you will need to edit this part. For me, it's CUIV because that is my username. And it is C users quiv and then hotspot starter.ps1. But you need to change it to whatever you chose as the file name and the folder to start that in. OK, so I'm going to control, uh, control C this, so copy this. And now in the tasks, uh, new action. In the arguments, I will put this. So this is going to launch PowerShell and execute the script that we just created. And I want to make sure as well that it starts in the right spot. So I'm now going to put the uh, path of the folder that contains that script. It shouldn't be necessary, but just in case. So this is going to be C backslash users backslash quiv. But for you, it will be your own username where you put the script file. So if you decide to put, this, put the script file somewhere else, you will need to adjust here. OK, and now I will complete this. My user currently has a password. So if your user has a password set, it will ask you this. So I will fill in the password to confirm that I am making this request to start the script. And you can see we have a hotspot starter that will be done at uh, system startup. And it should start up the hotspot regardless of whether we have any other Wi-Fi network that's flying around for the PC to connect to. So now what's going to happen is when you take your computer into the field, you're in the middle of nowhere. There is no network service. You don't have your smartphone with you. Nothing is, is there. You turn on the PC and it will broadcast its own Wi-Fi hotspot, which is only useful for you to connect from another computer directly, like peer to peer, to your mini PC. And then you can use remote desktop to connect to your mini PC and control it fully from your laptop, even though there is no internet connection whatsoever. If you're interested in the steps to actually get a remote desktop set up and all of the mini PC set up, my guide is still relevant now, the one that I created 10, 12 months ago. So I'll put the link up above if I haven't already and down below in the description so you can have a look. In the description, you'll have also all of the script parameters and the text to copy paste.
Just to show you, I will restart the mini PC and we're going to see after the restart whether the hotspot has indeed been launched. So let's do that. Okay, and we're back. And if I click on the uh, Wi-Fi stuff, you can see I have my hotspot already launched with from my Melee Quieter 4C computer. And so we're ready to go. Obviously, the real test is turning off the Wi-Fi and making sure that my computer has no internet connection. I have done this several times. I will not anger my wife even more to do it again. Trust me, it works. And with that, we are done. So we finally, thanks to uh, multiple people, we have a way to create a, a mobile hotspot that will turn itself on regardless of whether we have internet connectivity on a Windows 11 PC. Finally, and it boggles my mind that Microsoft has to make this so complex when this is literally a one minute operation to set up such a Wi-Fi hotspot on a Linux computer, I think also on a Mac for that matter. I'm not sure though and that it's already pre-set up on stuff like the ASI Air or the Stellar Mate Pro. But at least once you spent like 15 minutes doing those operations, you are good to go. So I hope this was useful to you. It was useful to me. Thank you so much to Schrodinger Hepcat, whoever you are. Thank you so much to Craig for reaching out with this. And I hope that this was useful for you guys. If you want more tips and tricks, well, you can look at my backlog of videos. I have tons of them. You can also subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about this method. And if you want to really support the channel, you can use any of my affiliate links below at no cost to you. If you're planning on buying anything on Amazon or Agina or anything like that, you can click on the links, buy something, and I will get a small, tiny commission. But every bit helps. And if you're spe feeling especially grandiosely generous, you can join my Patreon link in the description. It really actually is super helpful. And you guys made the, the channel possible as well as joining the channel as a member with the join button next to the subscribe button. Same thing here, guys. The channel exists because of you. So thank you so much. More important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.